Hi. Uh, to uh, answer the question why Portuguese, I uh, chose to remember uh, my younger age when I had to select a language to have access to literature abroad. Um, I read the books in translation, but the translations in those days were not that good in Brazil. So I, th I went for French and an English, and this offered me a number of uh, possibilities uh, in terms of authors as well as uh, intellectual possibilities. So um, this was my original motivation, literature. But I found out that soon um, I would extend uh, my interest to other fields of knowledge. Through literature, I became more curious about the countries uh, whose authors I, I was reading. And this is particularly true nowadays with the world so interconnected as, as we have. For instance, uh, this takes us straight to other fields of art, uh, in particular cinema and uh, music. In the case of Brazil, you have a, a wide variety of wealth in the domain of music, as everyone knows, but also in film. And the same is obviously true uh, uh, for uh, African countries uh, speaking Portuguese as well as Portugal. Portugal has an excellent uh, uh, film industry and the same is uh, happening uh, in Africa as investments begin to pour in in the do domain of uh, communications. But if we stick to literature for a while and consider Portuguese as an option, uh, the very names of few author, a few authors that I could mention here should be enough to uh, entice the interest of a U.S. citizen, a student, any uh, person particularly interested in discovering what lies behind the language. In the case of Portugal, uh, starting with the country that, in a sense, colonized Brazil and the Portuguese speaking countries we will be mentioning later on. You have in uh, Portugal, you have Camões, who is uh, the Portuguese equivalent to Cervantes in Spain, in terms of importance and uh, range. Uh, major poets associated to the discoveries of, the, of Brazil and other countries, uh, all the adventures, the heroic role Portugal played in those days, you have to go back and realize that Portugal was um, a key player in the world, uh, discovering the way to the Indies and uh, all the trade that ensued after that. So uh, Camões is associated to that. But in recent times, jumping 500 years, you have Saramago, José Saramago won the Nobel uh, Prize for Literature a couple of decades ago, and he is considered by any standards a major, major writer. Fernando Pessoa is uh, a name that has to be mentioned in the domain of poetry in Portugal, a major poet ranking among the greatest of any country. In Brazil, we have uh, our own names to mention. Machado de Assis would be obviously the first one. Uh, widely translated as well, but Guimarães Rosa remains uh, another name to be mentioned for sure, as well uh, as a personal favorite of mine called Graciliano Ramos. You also have uh, Clarice Lispector, whose work, she's a major writer in Brazil, uh, died a few years ago and her work has been translated uh, to the United States thanks to Benjamin Moser, who wrote an, an extraordinary biography of this woman. Uh, Clarice is fantastic. Uh, and then you have uh, poets like uh, Mario Bandeira and uh, Carlos Drummond de Andrade, uh, Cabral de Melo Neto. These uh, uh, poets uh, are part of our uh, fantastic array of, of writers, some of them having even uh, blended like Vinicius de Moraes with uh, popular music in the bossa nova. Many of the key uh, 
uh, writings of the, the songs were done by Vinícius de Moraes. So we have to mention, of course, in Africa there is a, a, a writer I recommend highly in Mozambique called uh, Mirka Koto. And also in uh, Angola, José Luandino Vieira, a major writer, and there are others that spread around the, the continent who are being discovered, published, and, and translated. So uh, this, in a sense, uh, opens the universe of our interest for the Portuguese-speaking countries, because through literature, and as I mentioned, cinema and music, you have access to uh, all kinds of uh, mysteries and uh, atmospheres and uh, secrets that hide be beyond the words and uh, the rhythms of the stories told. I would like to speak now about uh, beyond literature, if I may, and beyond art, to mention uh, the social impact that uh, Portuguese has in, in the world nowadays. Uh, the very fact that Portuguese is spoken in three different continents, widely spoken in three different continents, goes a long way to enshrine the language as a main uh, connector between nations as diverse as Brazil, Portugal, and say, Angola and Mozambique. Major players in the international scene but their perspectives are highly interesting to study or to take into account for their uniqueness. Uh, remember that the interest in one particular country does not necessarily lie in the political or economic importance of that country. It lies in the importance of the country's culture. For that simple reason, Angola and Mozambique, to name only two of the Portuguese-speaking countries in Africa, remain cultural influences in their own right within the African continent, and as a consequence in the world's context. If you have these four countries, you have um, an amazing uh, wealth of diversified linguistic universe which is worth exploring when you learn Portuguese. So you're not getting a language. You're getting a number of countries which represent a mosaic. And this mosaic is very dynamic. And that's what you get in terms of having access to Portuguese, a distinct mosaic. Now, um, thinking about a foreigner, Particular, in this particular case, a U.S. citizen, within the specific social environment of these countries. And this is what I mean by their uniqueness. This is what brings something new to the scene when you study Portuguese. And uh, when one learns a foreign language, the main objective should not necessarily be, if I may say so, a duplication of knowledge something that often happens when a U.S. citizen studies, for instance, a European language. But a diversification of points of view. You want to enter new worlds, not the ones that are slightly similar to yours. That's the distinction that has to be made when you make a choice like Portuguese. And I can give you an example, which is an example that is so close to us. Um, the U.S. is going through delicate times concerning the racial challenges it faces. To some extent, to a great extent, Brazil shares the same challenges. Both our economies were heavily dependent on slavery, and both nations had to overcome the social consequences that followed, and which still linger today, as we know. Now, I ask. Wouldn't this U.S. student or a U.S. business or even a tourist while visiting a Portuguese-speaking country, wouldn't he or she benefit from interacting with locals when dealing with ideas, problems and challenges affecting his or her own country? The answer to that is obvious. 
the same would not necessarily happen if you discuss intellectually the same topics with an European who never went through the problems related to slavery. I can tell you that Brazil, which has a long-standing relationship with Portuguese-speaking African scholars, has learned a lot on how they view, from their unique perspective, races outside their own borders, as a black country, as black nations. This goes a long way to show you how diversified motivations can be when choosing a foreign language to study. It's not the language that matters. It is the doors that language opens to you. A new language is like an adventure. One never knows where each one of these adventures can take us. So my guess is why not try Portuguese and find out? Come